have been hearing about uh, the data governance automation. I will quickly walk through the process of how this automation works and what are the different uh, things that are done by Axon Enterprise Catalog and the data quality and what will be the eventual outcome. So the stages of automation includes five distinct levels. It starts with setup, then we will link the objects, then we will onboard them from enterprise data catalog to Axon and the rules are then executed and eventually we will see the results. Even though this may sound very technical in nature, but when you start doing this, uh, it gives you the entire, you know, diameter or the breadth and width of the, the automation and it is not as, you know, complicated as the entire process might look like, okay. So the, the journey starts in Axon. In Axon, you define a business glossary, okay. And once you define your business glossary, uh, you are going to look at how things are on the enterprise data catalog side. So enterprise data catalog is my window for my technical metadata. I will be having multiple sources. This could be an Oracle database or it could be something in cloud or it could be something unstructured. So what am I doing on the enterprise catalog is I am going to, you know, discover the metadata. And once I have discovered the metadata, I am going to get the entire DNA of my source. Either it could contain multiple columns, it, depending upon the type of source it is, or it might have fields and the folder structure and so on. So once I have that information on catalog, from a governance perspective, I may want to, you know, bring that information into Axon. So what I'm now going to do is, I'm going to run something called as an onboarding job. This onboarding job is a script that gets automated or that runs every night by Axon server, assuming that it is integrated with your data catalog. So it will bring all the information from your data catalog into the Axon side where glossary is my point of contact. Okay. So now what I'm now doing is I'm going to see the, what I'm going to get once it is integrated. Okay. So just don't know, worry about, you know, how do I, you know, connect my Axon to EDC, what and all I have to do. Just keep that in mind. After that, we'll be looking on that in Friday. So once I onboard the information from enterprise data catalog, that is now, you know, that will automatically create attributes and data sets. So data set is roughly the representation of tables or files for my physical metadata. Attributes are nothing but the representation of columns uh, or the fields uh, on the Axon side for a given glossary. If I take an example of email, so email might be discovered at multiple places um, by enterprise catalog. And once that is linked to the glossary of email on the Axon side, so all, if there are multiple fields that have been discovered, all that information will be onboarded into Axon side. So Axon glossary for email will have multiple entries now. So you need not have to physically bring that inside. So automatically all that information will be brought so that, you know, because uh, you have already made that, you know, marriage between uh, EDC and Axon, uh, between glossary and something called as data domain on the enterprise data catalog side. Okay. And once this information is brought in, okay, so you have a, you know, good representation of your uh, physical metadata uh, that is, you know, uh, something that will help you to make your decisions on the Axon side. As I was telling yesterday in my demo, uh, I'm not sure about the quality of the data, okay? I'm not really, uh, you know, comfortable with how good the data is. So I may want to verify or validate the data. The challenge here is how many fields are there? So if there are hundreds of emails that are there in the field, that are there in the physical metadata world, I cannot create a rule for each of them one by one. That is an impossible task, right? And I'm just talking about one glossary here. If there are hundreds of glossaries and if there are, you know, 
hundreds of uh, or thousands of columns discovered and they have been you know connected to different glossaries then it becomes a you know a monumental problem so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to use something called as standard rules in axon so what that rule is it's very it's very simple and it's very very user friendly so what you will be doing is you will go and trigger a rule here looking out for a specific parameter like completeness validity you know accuracy timeliness based on the condition that has to be you know met for a given column or the attribute so you will start your discovery process okay and once you start the discovery process uh, you will create the standard uh, rule and you will trigger the uh, local rules based on the number of attributes that are there so you'll create one standard rule for a given glossary so once you create that standard rule let's say you want to check the validity of your email field and uh, you know automatically uh, multiple local rules are created for each and every attributes okay and once these local rules are created they will now you know start the journey and they will go and touch the metadata because the connections are internally shared and then you know automatically a mapping will be created and this will all be automated for you so each and every local rule for a given attribute will go to the source metadata here and it will verify the you know the data with respect to the you know the rule that you are checking here whether you are looking for a completeness or a validity or accuracy or timeliness depending upon the condition that you have passed that information will be you know will be searched or validated from the actual source metadata and once that is done so that that results will be now sent back to the axon uh, interface so axon will you know load the results it will uh, take the inputs and you know will load corresponding metrics on to the given glossary for a specific corresponding attribute here so in that way this is a complete uh, you know journey that you will have uh, from when you start your journey from glossary and we will look for the actual physical metadata in the edc world bring that information in the onboarding process then create one specific standard rule that will trigger multiple local rules which will be now will it will be now actual you know soldiers for you that you go and check the data at the columnar level and then eventually the metrics will be loaded saying that hey i have found some uh, 10000 rows out of which some 80 88000 rows were good enough which are matching the condition 2000 didn't match uh, you know so in that way uh, if there are hundreds of uh, emails then for each and every one there will be one local rule will be sent and uh, that will get the results uh, executed and you will be able to see the results on the axon dashboard so this is in a nutshell how uh, it works and this is what you will be going to do okay and uh, you will be seeing all the results here so this is uh, this gives you a holistic view of the numbers uh, that eventually you will see i'll quickly show the a quick demo of this so that you know it will uh, it will be there in your uh, mind for some time i'm going to an environment here okay and i'm going to uh, a specific glossary right so i will go on click something called as uh, an email here and search for this field so i am looking for a, a glossary called email here in this example okay so i have my email here i'll click the glossary called email address right this glossary is something that i have okay if i go to the data tab since this data has been onboarded for this particular glossary so i am able to see that you know uh, there are multiple uh, you know uh, fields that it has been imported into this uh, uh, glossary here so those attributes will be visible okay so you can see that uh, there are multiple you know fields uh, that have been imported and these are all the actual physical fields uh, that have been imported and uh, these are the different tables and this is my actual data that has come in okay this email uh, when i click and go move further it will show me from where it has come and all those things which we will see this in detail in your technical track 
now what i am now going to do is i want to measure these email fields right so i can go to the data quality tab here and i can create some rules okay there there, there are some you know rules that are already been created here so it has gone ahead and measured those those fields and i am able to see some results here So I created one rule for completeness of my email based on a standard set of rule. I can go and use this standard rule and I should be able to see the results. And uh, what happens is when I create this rule and I, when I say that it should trigger local rules. So what it will eventually do for me is it will go and create uh, multiple local rules and which will go to each and every database or each and every table where and all email has been uh, discovered. And it will go and you know try to measure the the quality of the data based on the the rule that I am going to use. Now you might be saying that hey, I mean the the rule creation is a challenge for me. Okay, so that is something that you may you may want to you know uh, uh, argue with me. So what Axon uh, engineers have done is they have come up with a very easy way for you. So what now you can do is uh, uh, if you I can go here to the company page. I need to log in. That's my mistake. Okay. So what I can do is I can go and create a new standard rule, and uh, right, I can say. Okay, I just see this one, so I just want to show you the the you know the consistency. Um, here I can say that. I have some dec I'm decent English here, so I can say email is not null. Okay, so that's it. So you can uh, then Claire will come into the play. The, the first question that you had in the quiz today, the same Claire will come in and it will it will help you to create a rule for you. You know, it will help you to create a rule that will check whether email field is null or not. You can give, you can give multiple conditions. About there is a you know there's a standard set of instructions. If you follow that, then you can use your you know standard English standard keywords and then generate a rule for you. Okay. So once I do this, so then what happens is uh, a typical uh, you know uh, rule will be created for you. So you can it, it is now going to you know uh, measure uh, saying that uh, if email is not null, then return the results. Okay. So this is uh, this is the easy way of doing that. This is one way of doing that, right? Okay. So if you don't want this option, if you already have a core of engineers who are experts in creating those rules, then you can, you know, pull that information from the data quality side. So how do I see this? What is this all about? We will have a quick look at that in the technical track. Okay. So now I'm going to use this here. I'm I'm a very lazy guy. I don't want to create rules on the other side. I am I have pretty decent English. So let me go and create one here. Okay. So I will say okay here. Okay. So what happens here is a new rule is created based on my English. Okay. Based on what I'm looking for. Right. So then select the local rule creation automatically. And since we are doing a demo here, I'm going to select the ad hoc mode. So there are multiple you know options for you. So you can uh, trigger this rule on a daily basis, weekly, monthly, quarterly, bi-weekly and ad hoc. Since I'm doing a demo in front of my customer, I may go with the ad hoc mode. So this rule will be triggered only once. Okay. However, in practical or a real life world, you may want to use it a weekly or a monthly or a quarterly, depending upon how your business wants to you know, measure the quality of the data. Okay. So just make sure that you select the local rule generation automatically. And save and close this and set the frequency to attack. In your lab, you might have given it to you run on a daily basis. I would recommend going that way because uh, it'll uh, once you create ad hoc, you cannot change it to daily or a you know any other mode. However, if you created the and set the frequency to daily, then you can come and change the mode to ad hoc or anything of that sort. So I'm going to save and close this. Uh, as of now, it is English only. Okay, so as of now, it is plain English and with some structured. So if you give something, uh, something which is which is in a, which is in a very odd way, you know, like email null not applied or something like that, it may not understand. So there is some standard do's and don'ts in the user guide. You may want to follow that. 
and kindly note that this is the first version of the uh, natural language processing of this rule so you know there will be some updates and improvements going forward and but as of now it is uh, plain english only as with any ai uh, this will learn more languages over time and this will learn more english also this in, even the english skill of uh, the nlp rule generation is limited today so spelling typos uh, it may not be in a position to fix that so but it will it will certainly you know uh, but it will allow you to fix that uh, mistake and it will then generate help you to generate a rule okay so what it will it what it will do is it will accelerate your effort you know so you may not have to wait for uh, the folks on the dqo side to help you to create a rule this will you know accelerate this most of the rules start you know will help you to measure the quality of your data so once you do this click save and close option so what happens here is uh, since uh, created this rule so let me see okay so the now rule is now created so the standard rule is now created and you can see that there are 10 local rules generated so why are these 10 local rules these are basically meant for my uh, the attributes that were discovered or associated with the glossary item here if i go to my data tab here and if i click on attributes i should be able to see 10 entries in this uh, there may be 11 records maybe one it did not pick it up uh, maybe it, it may not be you know uh, something that uh, it, it did not uh, think that's a valid email or something or it might just give you an error message later on saying that that record is not you know uh, in sync with what it, what you are looking for okay now i'll go back to the data tab here or data quality tab right this consistency rule is now triggered so i'll click on this option dq under or 116 if i click on the report tab so now uh, the scores are still not applied so you will have to we will have to wait for some time so what happens here is uh, uh, this information is now relayed to the informatica administrator and uh, within some short period of time assuming that the load of the uh, you know dq you know data integration service or the dis service is not overloaded and uh, then it will it will start populating the results for you so then you should be able to see the scores uh, something in the range of what we have had for the other roles so we may have to wait for some 5 or 10 minutes uh, before the results will start getting populated and what you will see is something similar to this okay and uh, you will see some results similar to this they may not be the same results but they will be similar to this okay so this is something you will be seeing so in this case there were only 9 records that were discovered okay and uh, here it is 10 records the reason is something what i was telling to you earlier was the onboarding job so you can see that in the first case which i ran last week uh, it was used 9 times and this is now used 10 times where is that 10th record coming into play it might be it is because we ran the onboarding job so what as was as i was telling you the onboarding is a script that gets executed and uh, you can also forcefully execute that script so what happens when you execute the script is uh, i'll quickly show it in the notification tab you will see that you know it will try to mount all the you know uh, the linkages between various objects and uh, it will be uploading you know the last job was run let's say on the 14th or on the 16th of you know uh, april so today happens to be 21st so uh, so the first job might have been executed on 14th or 15th then there may be one more onboarding happened on 16th so one more new entry was added so that is why you know that was not uh, triggered in case you have set your uh, load standard rule execution to daily or a weekly basis next time whenever the execution is uh, automatically triggered by axon then the one which is not been touched or if something got changed uh, will also be considered so then the results will get altered so what you are able to see here is uh, uh, the results and uh, in the results tab the good part for you is uh, uh, you know you can see the uh, the flow chart so for what i mean by flow is it will tell whether this risk score has been tapered or updated as such so it has it has triggered on uh, on these many days today also it got triggered uh, maybe you know uh, i was testing in the morning so it might have triggered so that is what you will be seeing 
in case the data quality has improved this number will go up if the data number of records also has improved on your uh, uh, on the data side where where it is going and measuring then there will be a variation and you can get this graph and uh, also you once you have this graph you can share this as a report and if you're not comfortable with these results you can even go ahead and trigger a change request okay uh, so that you can put it saying that hey the, the owner of this the data store has to look at uh, the quality of data which appears to be pretty bad you know however the new rule that i created uh, will take some time maybe 10 to 15 minutes for it to populate and then I should be able to see the results uh, on my dashboard. Okay, so I will. I can. It will tell me about uh, what is that it is measuring, and all that information is readily available on the Axon dashboard, or uh, for each and every uh, entity here. Now let me go back to the previous screen. Okay, and let me go to the data quality tab. <coughs> right. This is still in the execution mode. If we go to reports, so you can see that you know so the information is started flowing for the new one, new item here. So some of them has already come right there, and the others are still coming. So automatically, you know, the information will be uh, will be readily available on the uh, Axon dashboard. Uh, it will actually go and measure uh, the volume. And it will tell about you know if there are any nulls. If there are no nulls, it will return the results. Okay. And uh, as I said, uh, this is a dynamic process. Uh, if you set the interval according to the you know business needs, then the rules will be triggered at that particular uh, you know interval of your choice, and uh, the results will be updated. And uh, you as a you know as a management uh, you know representative can. Uh, can look at these numbers and and as I told I just showed to you yesterday this can be further you know looked up in an holistic way uh, we can look at it from a graph particular where at a very high level and you know it will show me about the consistency or completeness depending upon which and all rules you used and created and in that way you know uh, it's a it's a measure of your uh, data quality and which data it is measuring it is measuring your actual data which is come which is getting discovered from the catalog side and that catalog data is mounted on axon and axon will then you know use that uh, you know and move and and on that you are going to trigger the the data quality rules this is in nutshell your data governance automation lab you will see the business side of the story and how we can stitch this integration uh, that we will see that uh, i mean i have still covered something in the lab uh, but uh, uh, some more technicalities will be discussed in the technical part.